Today you're here in the boathouse and we're going to give you a quick tour and show you what's going on here in the, in the world of shellfish. So our main job here is to help preserve and restore the bay scallop uh, commercial fishery and the recreational fishery. We also do a lot of oyster stock enhancement, uh, quahog enhancement, water quality, you name it. Anything that has to do with the harbor, we're involved in it. Um, so come along and I'll give you a tour. Okay, so now you're standing in, this is our broodstock room. We have 12 tanks here and this room holds our adult shellfish. So it's used to hold quahogs, oysters, and bay scallops. And what's unique about this room is that shellfish this time of year, um, it's March, are not uh, used to spawning and so they're kind of dormant right now. So this room kind of mimics spring conditions on Nantucket and so we have our lights on a photo period, so they're on for 16 hours a day, off for eight hours. Um, also, the water temperature here is warmer than it is in the harbor right now. So these uh, quahogs are at 68 degrees. And we're also feeding them algae, which is over here um, in these tubes called cow walls. So these are on a timer and it feeds them every three hours. And so all of these parameters into this conditioning tank um, mimics spring and so they're in here for six to eight weeks and it allows their eggs and sperm to mature so that we're able to spawn them during a time of the year that they're not normally spawning. All right, now we're gonna go check out the spawning area. It's right over here. This is our spawning area. This is our table um, where we put the broodstock that you just saw from the broodstock room. We scrub them up. Um, we take them off feed for 48 hours to kind of clean out their system. And then we put them on this table. And this table is colored black so that we're able to see the difference between the eggs and the sperm when they come out. So after the spawning's complete, we collect the fertilized eggs by draining uh, the table down. So we collect the eggs on a sieve just like this one. The eggs are really, really small, so we use um, usually like a 30 micrometer screen, which is really, really tiny. It allows the eggs to catch on the screen, but the sperm to pass through. And then we'll rinse the screen into a bucket and count the eggs. Now that we have all these fertilized eggs, we need to um, give them 24 hours in clean, sterile seawater to hatch out. And so then they go into these various tanks right here. So we have a couple 500 gallon tanks and then we have 10 100 um, gallon tanks. And so for shellfish, the larval cycles are a little bit different. They're dependent on um, what species they are, but for base gobs, usually 12 to 14 days in this larval area. Um, and then quahogs are about 12 days and then oysters are in between 16 to 22 based on how they're growing. Um, but basically the care is the same, which makes it really unique about um, having a shellfish hatchery because you can grow multiple species at the same time. They're eating the same algae. They require the same type of care. So the biggest part of running a shellfish hatchery is growing enough food to feed the shellfish because they eat a lot. Um, shellfish are filter feeders, so they filter phytoplankton from the harbor, um, which is really great because they act to uh, act as you know, water cleaners and purifiers. So in the hatchery, we grow several different species of algae. Um, each container has a different species of algae. This is called tetraselmus. It's a green algae, hence the green color. Um, each species has a different nutritional profile, which means it might be higher in starches and lipids or have better vitamins, that sort of thing. So, um, and they're also different sizes. So what you're looking at here is green pigmented water with uh, you know, millions and millions of little tiny green algae cells swimming around. Um, it isn't like the macro algae that you see growing on pools or um, on your boat and that sort of thing. So this is micro algae. We're really lucky on Nantucket to have such a clean water source. We live 35 miles out to sea and the awesome part about where this hatchery is is it's located on Brant Point. So when the tide comes in from the jetties, we're getting that fresh, clean water coming from the ocean. So it's an ideal spot to have a hatchery. All of our water is pumped from the end of the dock. It's just about 200 feet out there. Um, it comes in through a pump right here. We're able to program our pump um, based on gallons per minute. So we can pump water in really fast or slowly depending on what we're doing. All of our water goes through a sand filter right here, and then this is a uh, one micron bag filter. So everything essentially is super clean coming into here. Um, and then it's put into our water tanks over here. Once the water is put into the tanks, um, 
we recirculate that water through its own system. So we have four different tanks, so we're able to have four different tanks doing four different temperatures, which is nice because we can do um, four different species that have, might have different temperature requirements. It just makes it really versatile for our day and what we're able to do in here. So if you want to take a little closer look, we have, this is our typical recirculating system. The water comes into these tanks. They're really tall. They're 1,100 gallons. Um, we bought four-foot diameter tanks that are really tall to preserve space. Um, this is a historical building, so we really wanted to maximize our floor, floor space. Um, so we got these tall tanks. The water gets pumped in through the top, and then it recirculates through another one micron filter, and then it goes through heat pumps upstairs, which are programmed um, for based on the temperature that we want the tank to be. All right, after the larval cycle, when they go through metamorphosis and they're ready to set, this is an example of a, a system that we use to set both base scallops, quahogs, and oysters as well. So this is called a downweller system. Um, basically, you have the same screens. They're just a little bit larger in size. This one, I think, is a 500 micron screen. So they sit right here, and you put the shellfish and they, in here, and they sit on the screen in the water. And then we have these little items called air lifts. And so they pump water and air up and go down through the screen. So they're called downwellers. And the next phase of our hatchery development on the dock and in this space, too, is we are um, receiving seven new downweller tanks um, that we're able to use for shellfish grow out. Um, up until this point, we've been doing larval releases where we just raise shellfish larvae and we release them. Um, but we're really hoping to expand our production cycle and do some more grow out um, so that we can have some larger shellfish to do stock enhancement with. So this is the tank room. These are the tops of the tanks that we were looking at downstairs. Um, this is where the water comes in and recirculates through. These are called bioballs. Um, basically, we're just stripping any gas that might be coming in in the water um, that could be harmful to the shellfish and just filtering through these balls um, does that. So we have uh, green lines that go into our heat exchanger room and the yellow lines are the return lines. And so that's how we heat and cool the tank. So if you want to head into that room, I can show you the technology there for heating and cooling the tanks quickly. All right, welcome to our heat pump room. So this is where all of the seawater from down below in our large tanks passes through. So each tank has its own separate heat pump. Um, they just look like big air conditioning units. Um, what's unique about these is that they both heat and cool. So we can really just come up here and set the temperature gauge to what we want. Um, and it will trigger a valve and it will start heating or cooling. So that's really awesome. Usually these items are located outside, but since we are on a Coast Guard beach and we're historical, we have them inside. Um, so they're not very loud. They don't put off too much heat. Um, but they're a very efficient way to heat and cool um, our seawater system, so we're pretty happy with it. All of our algae cultures are maintained in a lab setting, so we have them up here in my office under a hood. Um, so, like I said before, we get all of our tubes from various institutions that specialize in growing clean cultures of algae. And it's like a restaurant, so you just order the algae based on the species that you want and that you're going to need to feed to whatever it is that you're growing. So we have probably eight different species up here. Um, we have algae that swims, algae that doesn't swim. We have diatoms, just all different types of flavors of algae for the, for the shellfish. And we keep it in here um, just to keep it as sterile as possible um, so that if we have a problem that happens downstairs in the larger cultures, we're able to restart using these smaller clean cultures. Um, so it's basically the same process. We use a pressure cooker though to sterilize our water instead of bleach up here. And we inoculate these smaller flasks, these 150 mil flasks um, from the tubes where we're growing the, the individual species as well. So we do this about every three weeks up here and we just keep it separate from every, everything else just to maintain sterility. for the town of Nantucket, Natural Resources Department. What I do here is I started the shell recycling program, Shuck It for Nantucket, and we have 30 participants uh, between restaurants and raw bars, and they recycle their oyster or quahog shell. So one of my favorite 
favorite projects that I've been working on since I started the job here is uh, looking at the phytoplankton, uh, so the little microscopic plants that live in the harbor and in the ponds. Sometimes these plants can create uh, blooms and sometimes depending on what the species is, they can be harmful and uh, create an algal bloom which closes down uh, the ponds to swimming. So it's really interesting to be a part of this research looking into the different types of algae and also looking into management techniques to control that. My name is Jeff Carlson. I'm the Natural Resources Coordinator for the town of Nantucket and I run the Natural Resources Coordinator.